In this video I show you the basics of the Morse generator. You see we have profiles, edge to curve and edge to bool array. You open profiles and when you click on it you see a few profiles over here. This is the basic one which is handy to make your own profile or you can use any of the other presets. Let's choose this profile. When you click on it you will see that it adds a few objects into the scene. Here you see two booleans the add-on will use. And here you see some profiles. And these are the extra meshes which comes in handy later when you assemble parts to assets. Then if you select an object, press full stop on your numeric keypad, then 5, then 3. With tab you go in edit mode and in this case we have an edge already here. By the way I turn on snapping and the settings are increment, absolute grid snap, move, rotate and scale. On edges like these I often use Ctrl B to do something like this. I select the edges over here and I use Ctrl B again. Then select edge here, turn off snapping with shift tab, then grab with G, Z for example. You can do anything with these profiles on the YZ plane. With tab I go out of edit mode and do the other profiles. Then I click create parts. Then wait a few seconds and the add-on will batch generate parts into the scene. You can select a part, then press Shift D, Shift Z to move the part on the YZ plane. And this time I have to press Ctrl to snap around the YX plane. But I can also turn on snapping again. Select a part, press Alt D, Shift Z and then you don't have to press Ctrl anymore. R then Z to rotate. On the left top you see rot minus 90 in white letters. Always handy to check if you are not sure. Select all the parts and with the join parts button we can join these parts. And that will remove the doubles and the internal faces. So we will have a good mesh. Let's add a few more parts. For example one of the ceilings. Alt D shift Z. And again Alt D, Shift Z and one more time Alt D, Shift Z. R Z to rotate on Z axis, check the top left, minus 90. I select these parts. Now you see that the origin is over here. And I want to have the origin here or there. So I select first this one, then that, then that. So I have the active mesh and here the origin. If I now join the part, I have the origin on a nice place. It's handy when you press Shift S and use cursor to select it. I will show you later why it is useful. Now I go in edit mode for let's say this one over here. I press 2, left click, control left click, then we have this edge loop. Then we press the edge to curve button. Then we can do offset like that. We can extrude, change the thickness and convert to mesh once we're done. Let's change the thickness to something like that. And I change the offset to something like this. Extrude a little bit more. G and Z turn on snapping. You can also make railings like that. I press the convert to mesh button to convert it to mesh. I select the mesh and another mesh. Press Ctrl L to get this pop-up. Click on materials. Your mesh will get now the same material as the active mesh. You can use hard ops to make a bevel, shift Q then bevel, or if you have fluent then press F then add a bevel. Now I want to use the edge to bool array. But before I do that I press tab to go in edit mode and add a few loop cuts. This is better when you use booleans on a curvature. So I press 2, select an edge, control left click. Now we have an edge loop and press edge to bool array button. Because we have the origin and the mouse cursor on the correct place, this works well. You can go in edit mode to change the scale to your liking. Then I go over here and open this menu. Here I am changing the offset. And over here I change the location. If you look at the distance between each part, 
take half of that distance in mind. Use that distance to offset the array from the edge. And this in case we are going to snap parts together. So I move this over here first. Let's do it like this. We go in top view. So that's all right for now. So I click on this part. Then I go to the modifier tab and apply. I click on the boolean array and press H to hide it. And I can also get rid of this one. Let's check if everything is alright with the boolean. Check for artifacts, but this looks quite good. I don't see much issues over here. Let's add something else. I want to make some lights over here. So we select this. I go in edit mode. A few loop cuts over here. Select that one, control and then left click, and edge to bool array again. Then press Alt H. You see two arrays. Remove the latest two modifiers, those are double. Now I go in edit mode, and I press X to delete all the faces. I press Shift A and I want to add a cylinder and I scale it down. You see now the use of the mouse cursor is there. If it was somewhere else then the cylinder would appear elsewhere. I want to change a little bit the shape of the cylinder. Scale it down a bit like this. I press I for an inset. And extrude so I have something like this. I make it a bit smaller, maybe those could be lights. Now let's adjust the array, change the location for offset. I give it a bit more distance. I add a few more. And that looks fine to me. I select this part and apply the boolean. Select this boolean, press H to hide it. Check if everything is alright. Let's get rid of this edge. We can repeat this process multiple times. I will join these parts. I use Ctrl J for that. The parts are joined and the origin is still here, what's good. I use Alt D Shift Z again and rotate around the Z axis with R Z. Select the other part and press N for the end panel. If I click now join parts, it will beautifully join these parts. The only thing is I forgot the boolean on union, so we see holes instead of lights. But this looks also nice, so that's how you can make parts basically with the Moors Gen add-on. Thanks for watching and in case you don't have yet the add-on, check the link below.